and it's not just COVID, their own seems to be very serious. You know, so many people, we said they are some asymptomatic people that their own know. So they said there's nearly no home in El Paso now. And they are requesting for mobile mug. They, I mean, that's just the true thing. But we thank God we are not among them. So, Lord, we just want to thank you for your preservation. We want to thank you for what he's doing in our life. You have been so special to us. Being our God, you kept us. So we bless his name. So let's continue to remember those people who are at El Paso. The Almighty will spare their life, not unto death. And their life will not be wasted in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Blessed shall be your name. For in Jesus Christ's name we are praying. So we want to continue with our teaching. Today is the, the conclusion part of this series. Uh, the glory cloud and the hand time. The glory cloud and the hand time. We started by the far, for part one. We started by divining what an end time is. And uh, there are a lot of Bible references that they call end time so many names. Some they say latter day. Some said uh, the end of the day, the last day. It's the same thing they are trying to let us know that this there will a day like this. Actually, the manual we are using now was in 2008. And at that time, they said, we are already at what? At the end time. The latter day they are talking about. Today is what? It's 2020. So if what we are seeing in 2008 is giving us an indication of the end time. So how do we see it now? Which means for 12 months, 12 years, God has been moving us closer to the hand time. And that's why we should be very, very careful that this, our God, can come at any time. The hand time, the feeling of the hand time has started for long. And it's getting worse and worse. We are getting closer. You know, as what well, it's looking like it's getting worse, it's just showing that we are getting closer and closer. So the first part of the bio, I mean of this series, we talked about the hand time and the characteristics of the hand time. So those of us that have been present, so what are the characteristics of hand time that we study? At the context of this, you can say so many, but the context of this teaching, what are the characteristics of hand time that we can still remember? We know the end time was false four. teachers. False teachers. Okay, we know that. That's a good one. Who else can help us? Characteristics of end time. Sister John, I think you are trying to say something. Yes, that's true. Sister Wisdom. Sister Wisdom. The Lord themselves. I know that's why you ask questions. Like, why is it a crime to love yourself? What happened? Pestilence. Pestilence, okay. Uh, but are we? Wars. Huh? Wars. We have the wars, okay. Raphael Abbe, what are the characteristics of end time that you can remember? I'm not hearing you. Eh? Chaos. Chaos. Ah, okay. And that's true. That's what we are seeing now in America. Uncle John. Karasarisi of end time. That you can remember. False prophet. Okay. That's we are just talking about bad. What about the good things? Huh? Eh? The glory, no, no, that's other part. We are talking about what are the things that shows that end time is coming, but when we look at it, it's beneficial to us. Uh, knowledge. knowledge. There will be advanced in technology. 
Let's just read, uh, if you want to know, go and read uh, Genesis chapter 4. The, we were told about how technology was improving. And that's what we are seeing now. I could remember before I saw iPhone, I mean uh, iPhone, at left college. Nigeria. Huh? iPhone. Any phone. I mean, what do you call it? Cell phone, rather. Don't let me say iPhone. Cell phone, rather. That's what I want to say. I'm sorry. Cell phone. I left college before I saw cell phone. And many years, even, not just because it was uh, when uh, Obasanjo was. Uh, uh, yes, that's when I, uh, cell phone came to Nigeria. I could remember when my boss would come from uh, all at that time. We have one big uh, rotary one, and then another little set. We we'll go there and we we'll carry her to. I mean, carry him to Nitel to go and die Oland. Was so serious then, and still we thought we have technology, right? But now. I mean, I was asking somebody to help me transfer some money and give to somebody's account. And I sent the account. Not two minutes, the money had been transferred in Nigeria. I said, I said, that's why people are killing us. In I mean, killing people in Nigeria. Because they can just stop you. I said, and it, when I left Nigeria, it wasn't like that. When I left, uh, See, I mean, what I'm talking about, I was so surprised. I just told my brother, I said, ah, this account, can you send this money there? He said, I will do it now. Not one minute of it. And he sent me the proof that it's already transferred. Then I was surprised. I said, truly, technology has been advanced. <laughs> but now we are looking at it, we are enjoying it. People now want to go to moon for holiday. Yes, that's what, if you have the money, you can go. I mean, people have been trained now. The, the people that will go for the first crew already, they've been, they paid. It's not that they are going to pay. So they already paid. So they are going there to cruise. It's not cruise, it's one-way ticket. It's one-way ticket. They will come back now. They are not going to, have, no, they are not going to abandon them there. They are coming back. Uh -huh. They will go and come back. They are not living there. They are not going to build houses there. They are coming back. They don't <laughs> I mean, you can see how technology has been advancing. So many things is happening now. That is a sign of end time. Somebody is talking about flying car. We are talking about electrical car. That is a sign of end time. But we are rejoicing. Now we want to say we have to have a solar house. Uh, we don't want the uh, environment to be polluted. It's a sign of end time. So it's so good. Things are so much that we assume there's no God. Because of the technological advancement, especially in the developed country, they assume there's no God. They can explain everything scientifically. When demon is possessing people, they will look at you. They say, oh, go and do an MRI. I mean, what is the MRI? MRI. And S demon does not appear on that. For ex now, there are some people that if you tell them, ah, this lady is possessed, they will say, oh, what is he talking about? You could remember one of these uh, Nigerian doctor that said chloroquine is good. When they dig deep about it, because it's a deeper life, I mean, a mountain of fire lady. So all his preaching that I'm talking about demon and everything, they don't say it's a, that the, the, man, the woman is a demon my woman. <laughs> eh? It's not in Nigeria. Johnson, I mean, what is his name? The one that said chloroquine is good. Yeah, I mean, he said Nigerian, no. Yeah, Cameroon. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. All right, okay, let's agree. It's, it's okay where I come from, but if you go and see what people wrote about that lady, you say, I'm not here in one class. So it's a Cameroonian guy. The, the lady doesn't want the, the woman to come from Ibo land, right? 
All right, let's, let's, this is it. But what I'm trying to let you know is that it's a, uh, now man can say, I love my man. I mean, a, a new caster was telling me, yeah, um, I said, was telling me, was saying, on the television, there are millions of films. Say, I went out with my gay fiancé. And that's part of the news. That's part of the joke. But I don't see how man with this strong muscle be attracted to another man. How do you do it? I mean, I don't know how to start it. And a lady said, that's my lesbian. And they encourage them so much. If you see the type of sex toy that is available in the market, you will see that they don't really need anybody. It's true. Men and women. Google sex toys. You see the different types. No, I'm just telling you what is available. I'm, I'm sorry for, for referring to it. But it's there. People order it. <laughs> you want to buy the stock? <laughs> but God have mercy on us. That's what I'm saying. And this part of what? Technology. The whole thing is a taboo to say somebody is a gay. In fact, if it's in the northern part of Nigeria, they will stone the person to death immediately. But now we celebrate them. In fact, they are the one that, in, in this election, one state legalized it. And that's why you find all of them in California and in Florida. That's where they want to go and buy their houses now. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. So we are just talking about end time. These are the characteristics of end time, which we know. And then, later on, we talk about the, the, glory, I mean, the glory cloud. And the question is, why are we mixing the two together? Why did the person that put this digging deep teaching together put end time and the cloud, I mean, the glory cloud? The glory cloud is more or less the presence of the Most High God. And the reason why the cloud is, talk, is talking about the cloud, one is his promise that he is going to send his glory. And this God is, if you read Joel 2, let's read that Bible passage, Joel 2, 18, I think. I mean, 28. Joel 2, 28. Let's start with 28 and 29. So somebody, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your son and your daughter shall do what? Shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dream. And your young men shall. So the cloud we are talking about is what? The spirit of God. And the whole testament is so pronounced that they can physically see it. Yes. So is it basically part of the time and end time? Yeah, uh, yes, also. Because he promised that, it, that at the end I will pour my spirit. And he has a reason for doing it. Because otherwise all his children will be oppressed to the end. And no way to come out of it. Because you see what is going on in America now. It's a sign of end time. More or less, some people so fear one person now that they cannot even say what you are doing is wrong. Who dare you to say I'm wrong? Tomorrow you are out of my cabinet. That is the type of things that we are going through now. If it's back in the third world country, during the Abacha regime, who dare to say Abacha, you are gone. So, no, that's what we are just see. These are all sign of oppressions we are talking about. That's sign of oppressions. Whether you can call it any name, you can call it democracy or anything crazy. Call it what I'm telling you. According to the word of God, is sign of end time. So the end is very close. So I said during the Old Testament, 
this glory is so pronounced. We saw them when they were leaving Egypt. It was so pronounced on them that the cloud separates them from the Egyptians. Let's look at some of these Bible passages. Exodus 13, 21 to 22. Let's look at that. Exodus 13. So this time, where you look at the old, that is the presence of God going with them. God did not leave them alone. So it's so glaring then, and people are saying, ah, why can't we have it the same way that it used to be the old time? If you look at Exodus 42, 30, 40, 32, 32 to, or 34 to 35 would be better. Exodus 40. Let somebody read, please, 34 to 35. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So that is the presence of God. They said it was so much that Moses cannot even enter. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tent, tabernacle. And when so, the... And when the cloud was taken up from over... Let's just stop it. Just want to say the... Ground. But during the time of Jesus Christ, only on Jesus Christ that was being manifested. Yes. So how come Moses was not able to enter? Because the whole place was... If a cloud, ordinary smoke here, can you have find your way here? Let's well, say we're we talking about, So in the context of the presence of the glory of the Lord, right? Right. In the context, that's what we're... You've never seen it before. We have not seen, but we've seen stick smoke once. If you see stick smoke, can you drive through it? Can you see through it? But that's the way it's so many. It's, it's tangible thing you can see. It's not that you are feeling. It's not feeling. It's something you see. In fact, that's what they used to know that God has come to the tent. If that cloud is not descending, when God is leaving, the cloud will go. But the moment they see the cloud, even the people of, I mean, the Israelites, they would just say, Moses, go. We don't want to come closer. So it's so tangible that they can physically see it. So, but that time they said it was so much that Moses cannot even enter the tent. So on during the uh, Jesus era, we are told when Jesus was born, the the what they call those uh, nomadic people. The shepherd, they saw the glory of God. That's the first time they saw it. And they said they were so afraid. And when Jesus was being baptized also, the glory descended on him also. In the month of transfiguration, the glory of God was upon him. They said the cloth was like a snow. And Peter was mesmerized. He said, oh, we are not going again. Let's build three tabernacles here. He said, this is where we are going to live. But when the tent disappeared, they said, ah, so is it the way we want to be? <laughs> Jesus said, let's go back. So, and when he was leaving also, the glory took him, I mean, took him to the heaven. So, but after he left, the first time that they have some little sense, only Peter, John, and James saw the glory before, at the month of transfiguration. But when Jesus came the day of Pentecost. That's the first time they saw it. The Bible said the clothing of fire was upon them. And they begin to see, I mean, to talk in a different tongue. That is the glory of God. That is the presence. But God promised that uh, he's going to send us a comforter. That what he's talking about is his glory in the form of the Holy Spirit. That is coming. And this time around, it's not going to be departing. It's going to be indwelling. During the apostle period, we know it's two times that this was really manifested. 
Remember when they were arrested and they said they should not preach? But they went and they joined hands. And in Acts chapter 4, so when we are, they were praying, the place was what? Shaking. That the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it's not during the apostles. Our general pastor have told us several times when, how the Holy Spirit have dealt with him. He told God, according to him, that when he was praying, he was asking God for power that, God, you asked me to drop everything. I've dropped everything. But I don't want to just be a pastor with title. If you cannot give me power, kill me. According to him, he said that day God answered with an earthquake. I went from the camp as far as getting to Ndo State and Ogun State. That war, war, I mean, the frame of picture that people hang was falling down just because one person was praying. And according to him, he said, I still know the spot in the camp that he has taken some people there, that what you are seeing here. Because when he was doing, uh, teaching us, uh, one of these uh, special Holy Ghost service was asking, say, this is me, what about you? And we know God is not a respecter of person. So this Holy Spirit is so tangible in the life of the apostles that we are told the apron from Peter, I mean from Paul, was healing the sick. Ordinary shadow of Peter was casting out demons and healing the sick. This is the type of grace that God wants to put upon us at this time. But the question is, why are we not manifesting it? Why are we not asking for it? Because that's what God wants us to. That if we don't have it, the Bible says without signs and wonder, people will not believe. So where signs are not yet manifesting, we are not yet there. Where people cannot pray and things happen, we are not yet there. So that's why you see us as a Christian of this hour. We still have a long way to go. So Christianity is not in food and what? Drinks, but it's in power. So we want to ask for power. And that should be the desire of every Christian. But then when you are anointed, nobody can mess with you. Nobody. Because that's where we are going the impact of anointing, the life of a Christian. When you are anointed, you are secured. No matter the person, no matter the... Daddy Gio told us of, we were talking about Abacha now. He said there was a time the Abacha wanted to transform himself to a civilian president. And all is marabou, they said there's one person somewhere in one camp that if you don't get rid of that man, you will not be able to actualize your aim. And immediately the, the strike force is already there. Somebody has to leak it to say, Daddy Gio, you want to travel out or you are ready to die? That they mark you. The man with the anointing, with everything in him, he said he was shaking. He ran out to go and pray. He didn't discuss it with the wife. He said he was sweating. That God, is it the way I will go? He he didn't pray so long, and God said, okay, don't mind him. So when you get back to your church, on Friday, that was Holy Ghost service. He said that we should greet ourselves. I was in that Holy Ghost service. But we don't know the reason why. He said we should greet ourselves. Happy New Year. That's July, I think. So we shake hands, and he came. We shake Happy New Year. The following Monday, the man was dead. He said, Hindi, woman, kill him. Whether it's true or not, but he's dead. I mean, he was dead. So that's the way God protected his soul. And when you look at that Bible, I mean, also what God said in First Chronicles 16. Let's look at verse 20. I mean, 16. Let's look at uh, 20 to 22. And when they went from na- from nation to nation, from right. one kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them any wrong. Right. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. 22. Saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That's God. You can't touch. So do, do, during the time of uh, the Israelites, God mesmerized kings, nations that are so strong, 
we've just been destroyed. And that's the way God wants to protect us. It's a sign, it's a thing that we should know that this God loves us. That if we can be for him, he's ready to defend us with everything. And he has been defending us. You know how many people have planned that you will not wake up? Yes. Just because you are bouncing like a basketball, you, you think uh, you don't have enemy. But he was there. He frustrated the devices of the wicked and never allowed them to carry out their enterprise. If not God, I don't think any of us will be living. Some of us, we came from a terrible home. Home, it's not that they are hiding in, you know they are terrible. And we still survive it. That is God. That is the protection that is given us. So we should not just take it for granted. So here, the second part, they has what are the, why the glory of God? They say one, the first is to convict the sinner that there's still God. With, the, with all the technology and everything that we think we have, there is what? God in heaven. Example is like that layman by the pool of, I mean, by the beautiful gate. That man was there for 40 years. And one person just drew him up and started to walk. So they were just looking. And that's the type of wonder that's supposed to be happening now in the church. That people will come here and say, oh, my hand is with us. I say, okay, just stretch your hand without touching. And he's like one man, one of the Holy Ghost service also. I said it was so short. And miracles are happening in the front. And he was telling God in his mind, not praying, no. Go, oh, if I can be taller. And that's all. And before he finished talking, the word of the Lord came from that did you, that somebody is here. And this is what is in your mind, that if I'm taller than this, I'll be able to see. Say, check your pants, you're already taller. So how do you explain that? With technology, we explain it. That an elderly man was able to grow at least two inches. That's the type of anointing that we're asking for. That's the type of grace that is needed in the church. Our prayer is that God will anoint us in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatsoever that we cause God to do it, he will do it on our behalf. In Jesus' name. So that's what some of the prayer I want to pray tonight. I want to ask for his mercy. We ask him to qualify us for his power. Ask for power. The moment you have the power, every other thing will be added. Yes. If you have power and it's from God, money will follow. Might will fall. People will respect you. There's nobody. Now, according to that, did you about three Sundays ago? He said, now. He said, there's nobody in Nigeria that wants to become the president of Nigeria that will not force call. So he said, let them be any religion, they will force come. Say, I want to. He said, he talked to, I mean, he was saying, he spoke to one governor that, oh, please, sir, I want to come and visit you. And he said, they arranged everything, time was 10 a.m., that he will go. The guy calculated that he did, that before he traveled from camp to the state headquarters, it would take about one and a half hours or so. The guy got to the camp before 8 o'clock. And daddy said, ah, I'm the one to go. I said, daddy, it's okay. I've come. Tell, her, tell me what you want. Before 8 o'clock, it was already there. And these are just ordinary person. Why I'm using that idea today is that if I'm referring to the Bible, we say, oh, it's those people. Nobody's experiencing it. People are being anointed, and they are benefiting from it. We should be benefit. I mean, be a benefactor also from this in Jesus' name. Another reason why we need the anointing is, is bring judgment, especially when unrepented sin is brought into the camp. We know what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. I mean, Sapphira, yes, at Acts chapter 5. They are the owner of their land. They decided to sell their land. Nobody forced them to do it. And husband and wife, they agree. So let's give them half and keep half. If the man is not a man of God, how will he know? But their own life was terminated quickly. That's the type of thing to be in the church. When you say, ah, 
Sister, where did you go to? Me? I go nowhere. <laughs> Which part are you reading, sir? Sorry. I'm, read, I'm doing all the three parts. So part three is the last one. I'm on part two now. I just want to do the three together at the same time so that we can remember what we've learned. So part three is the last part, which we are going to now. And the part three is the, that the anointing of God is a double-edged, I mean, it has a double effect. So the glory of God, he said, the, the part three, you have the manual. Now let's go to part three, because the same people are being impatient with me now. Okay, part three. Say, so now our last study, we saw that the desire of God to manifest his glory is man, and the reason why the glory cloud is needed at this end time. This top part is important to every believer. Huh? Sorry, sorry. Who said? What do you have? Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Sorry, sorry. That's what I said. Oh, no. Section three, like you know, part three is the today's. Are we on the same page now, right? Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. All right. Part three. So I'm reading from the beginning, from the introduction. I hope we're on the same page, right? Yes. So please pay close attention, and I pray you will never lose his presence in your life. Amen. So there are two outlines, I mean three outlines in today's teaching. He said the, the double effect of his glory. As much as it is a desire to manifest his glory in man, we need to understand that the glory of God, which represents his presence, has a double effect, peace and war. It is therefore an error to believe that the manifestation of his glory can only bring peace. It can bring peace, I mean, always bring peace to the believer. But anyone that is against him or the believer, Actually, you can't be against God. But anyone that is against you is already against God. So, they give an example of what happened in Exodus 14, 21 to 31. Let's look at it and read. I've been in the Bible study. We all know it, right? That when they pass through the Red Sea, can we read it, please? And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by strong east wind on that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians mm -hmm. through the pillar of fire and the cloud, and troubled the whole host of Egyptians, right. and took off their chariots' wheels, that they brought them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. So the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. Praise the Lord. And so you can, let's just stop there. We can see that to the children of Israel, their desire that, oh God, let your cloud be present. Let your presence be available to us. But to Pharaoh, it was a disaster. So, if 
you are a pharaoh, just know the presence of God is going to be a disaster for you. But if you are a child of God, way will be made even where there is no way. God will create a way. I'm just full of Daddy Gio's example today. He said he was going from Ogomoso to Ilorin, and they said there was a narrow bridge at that time. There's only one car can pass at a time. If you are coming from the opposite side, you have to wait for the one that is coming here to go. But he said that day, a trailer was coming. They two are going to Ilorin, and they met at that bridge. How the bridge expanded, they are able to pass over. And the trailer did not run over them. Up to now, he said it's a mystery. He said the driver was shaking like a leaf. Everybody was, they were just saying, Daddy, how do we pass? How did we pass? But that's what God can do. So when that man was giving so many testimonies, you'll be looking at, God, where am I? Am I really serving you? But within our level, God has done a lot of tremendous things for us. Check yourself, especially now. God has been so faithful. You know, when we are saying, uh, there's an adage in our language that says, uh, and it's also a song, if I say I will count the blessing of God, that uh, it will be, before I finish counting, it will be dark, more or less. That's the way. And we have a song that we sang on Sunday. Say, when you are troubled, count your blessing and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So that's what I'm saying. When, look at Daniel. People reported Daniel that he should not have anything from other God, that they threw him to the lion there. The lion become pillow to Daniel. But the same lion consumed all those people that reported him. So please. The glory of God is a two-edged sword. To those that are not on God's side, it's going to be a disaster. But if you are on God's side, you will enjoy it. Remember the Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego too. That's uh, Daniel 3, 22 to 25. You want to read that one? Let's read that Bible passage. Right. So you can see the So what we are saying, although it's supposed to be to twenty five, but I think somebody is sleeping. So what we are saying is the same fire that was very hot killed those people that threw Daniel into I mean uh, Shadak, Meshach and Abednego. But they were inside the fire and joined themselves. And Isaiah 43, 2 and 3 come to life there when you pass through the fire. And fast forward, that Isaiah 43 also come to effect. So because you are honorable, I will give men a change for your life. Those are my key prayer points. When things are down, these are the things. That if I thought people must die, can't be me. Somebody will die. But it's not me. So these are your prayer points that you need to be praying. Oh, that accident is terrible. People die. No, not the child of God. I give an example of a lady. Was in, you know the olden days when they go from Benin to Ore. I mean, Lagos to, to Benin. And the girl was inside the station wagon, sitting at the back, was reading his Bible. And this accident happened. Everybody inside that car died. Only that lady. And something took the lady out and put him by the side of the road with his Bible in his hand. And when people came around and he was saying, um, this is my seat, people said, no. You don't know what you are talking about. I said, this is my bag. And he was inside the car. They said, well, they call it a basic. They are explaining it now. 
You can see how people can explain the glory of God. He said, Igbe. What's Igbe? Ah, good luck to <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's demonic wind. Is it like wind? Is a demonic wind? Some people back home, they have what they call a way. Or, or uh, even giving a deeper name now, it's understanding. What is offer? Explain offer. Okay, let's leave it. We are talking about the glory of God now. We are not talking about <laughs> we are talking about the power of the Most High God. Since you know it, that's cool. Let's look at the second outline quickly. He says it's dangerous to allow the glory of God or the cloud to depart. When man sinned in the Garden of Eden, one of the main consequences is that the glory of God in them departed. You know, when you have the glory of God, it's like you have a spell that's a mark that nobody touched you. And the thing is, there are two marks that man has. Is it that a mark from God or mark from the devil? If you have a spell of the devil on you, then you are in big trouble. There are some people, they will, you've never seen them before, they will just look and say, I can't stand that guy. You just look at, he has never done anything to you, but you just look at, I say, I don't like him. He's the mark of the devil. So when we are talking about the glory of God, it's the mark of God. The glory of God, see, when you have the glory of God, nobody will see your fault. No error finder will see you. It's only the thing that is good that will be seen. Yes. That's why we need to be asking for it. Let your glory. Father, let your glory cover me. If you are the type that every time people see your fault, they complain about you, you need to be doing what? You know, it will be asking God that every mark upon me, let your blood cover it. Uh, so those are the prayer points we need to be prayed. It's not something we just pray two, I mean, one second and we go. These are life prayer that we need to be praying every day. Let it be part of us. Because most of the time, and that's when you want to know, in fact, it makes you to be sensitive. It makes me to be sensitive. When I'm in office and most of the time, I have a boss that is looking for my fault. I know devil has started working. The first thing is to cover myself and then talk to the spirit of that man. That this spirit that is urging you to look my fault, today will silence you. I mean, I don't know whether you've been in that situation before. I've been there several times. But God has been very faithful all the time. You don't do anything. They just want to look for your trouble. They write petition. If, when you sneeze, they will magnify your sneezing and, and say, this is what you mean. And then you, you will not be running. I could remember the one that me and Wisdom were going for a prayer retreat. And I was talking to my, I didn't know I was talking loudly, that wisdom was able to. He said, ah, Pastor, what is going on? But meanwhile, I was thinking I was talking to myself inside. I didn't know I was saying it out. You can see how troubled I was. But thank God for God in heaven. God answer. And the trouble God. God will answer us too in Jesus' name. Amen. So, those are the things we want to ask for glory to cover you. When the glory departs, it's trouble, it's shame. You'll be exposed, you'll be naked. What is covering our, our, our nakedness is the glory of God. This cloth is nothing, though. No. Don't think you wear coat, too. The glory of God is our garment. Look at people like uh, Samson. He has the power, he has everything. And the uh, devil was just easing him. But he thought the glory was still there. And he said, I will arise. But the, the Bible, let's look at that Bible passage. Judges 16, let's start from 18 to 20. Let's see.
judges. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, mm -hmm. she said and called for the Lord to the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the Lord of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in, in their hand. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and the strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before mm -hmm. at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. Let's stop there. Now our story will not be like that in Jesus' name. Amen. Because I don't know the type of sleep that Samson slept on Delilah's sleep, that they can be scraping the hair. And they, I mean, I, I keep on looking at it. You see, they give tra tranquilizer for the guy. No, I think it's just the seven locks that they, that they, that they cut off. How did they cut it? I mean, what type of sleep? It's drunk in love. Terrible. No, sir, I'm sure you know about that more, sir. How do I know? You can be drunk <laughs> like... <laughs> I've not got into that. I'm always in love, but my own love is, has not got into your state. <laughs> ah. So you've got into that stage, eh? That's why you don't have hair in your head again. <laughs> So you've eaten vegetable to that level. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm just joking. I'm, with due respect to you. But what I'm saying is, I mean, how come the lady was best trained alive? And he, he make, I mean, make him to know the purpose. It's not that, oh, I'm just doing this. The lady was not disguising. And you are so carried away. Up, oh, sir. Yes. Isn't, isn't that the same with some people in abusive relationship, but they can't just say it, or they, for some reason they can't get out, or for some reason they, they just can't see that this is abusive and they just want to stay in it? May God have mercy. It's possible anyway, but I'm, I, every time I, I will say, what love, what is in the lab that this guy put in that make him not to be able to understand that the end has come? God have mercy. Let's look at the third outline. The third line, he said, when with, the, with the departure of the glory of God in man, some or all of these manifest. The first thing is shame. I mean, you've just been disgraced. You'll be wondering. I mean, it's the one man, the man of God, he said, want to cast out demons. And uh, he went with his secretary. They invited the man of God. The secretary was in the hotel, and he went, when the meeting was going on, and he saw a lady manifesting, and he wanted to cast it. Get out of him! He said, he said look, the lady that was manifesting looked at him and said, quiet. Who do you want to cast out? He said, I command you to get out. He said, quiet, I said. He said, you, you will cast me out. That, and he said, they said, mention the secretary's name. That is in the hotel. Say you that came with your secretary. And he mentioned the lady. So demon knows. He's just like the seven son of Sceva. Said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. How about you? So we pray that the glory, the, not that the man is not anointing, but he didn't know that the glory of God has departed. So may we not be disgraced in Jesus' name. Amen. What a shame for that man. So another thing is reproach. They will be bought in one's life. There will be struggle. There's what they call near success syndrome. You will run. You will never get there. I mean, when things are good for others, your own is. I mean, we be a karadori, a kayo dego. You know the meaning of that one? That when a biscuit got to the one that has no teeth, it become like a bone. You no, know, back home in Nigeria, when people are keen for fuel, 
and they will be selling to everybody. When you get to your home, they said, it's finished. I mean, that's it. You need the glory of God. And you will see some people, they will come, they will go to any extent to get fuel for them. Say, Uncle, wait, I will get you some fuel. But somebody come, I've been online for three hours. When they're about to put you on, they say the fuel is finished. Huh? <laughs> That's why we need the glory of God. There will be failure. We know Peter. Peter was an industrious person. He wasn't a lazy person. He said, we, f we fish all, all night. They know the time when fish will come out. When the water is quiet, that's when they look for their food. But they try everything all night, and they caught nothing. It's because the glory of God was not with them. The moment Jesus came, it doesn't matter. The weather does not matter. The timing was no matter. If God is there with you, everything will be easy. Because of you, they can suspend the law and they return it. Our, one of our pastors in Maryland, they were praying for a green card. There was, then they were, churches were filing for, for pastors and they make a law just like what they are doing now. And they were praying that this law should be suspended. They suspended the law on Thursday. Friday, they approved them. Monday, somebody went to court, and the law was reinstated back. This is a real-life story. The pastor is Pastor Aye, Ade Yokono. said they pray, God give them the green card. Monday, they went back to court. And the road close. So what do we need? We need the glory of God. What about barrenness? We are talking about barrenness now. It's not physical barrenness at all. It's just when others are spinning, your own never spin. You try and try and try. Many people in this country, they, they came, they were not lazy, they do certification where computer was going. It was when they passed their own certification, 9-11 happened. They never used the certificate. You know, before 9-11, before it was computer, computer, computer. Now it's coming up, now again. But their own, they become certified this week. The following week, there was 9-11. And they never use it. They don't. Some go to nursing. When they go to nursing, they did not work six months. They said they make mistakes and they suspended their lances. That is glory of God. Things that we need, glory of God depart from you, all this will be happening. What about loneliness? You're a girl, mature lady, you have everything one can look for, and nobody is saying, can I take you for a date? What you need is what? The glory of God. The same thing with man. You need the glory of God, and nobody wants to help. This lady doesn't like me. This one doesn't like me. What you need, what? Is the glory of God. When you ask for his glory, your home will like you. Everybody wants to date you. Ask for what? Glory of God. How about demonic oppression? It's when the glory of God is there, who dare that demon that will come and press you down when you are sleeping? Who is that demon? Well, how will he pass? But you see some people, before they sleep, even in the afternoon, an ordinary napping, people are pressing them down. They have nightmares. When others are having dreams, their own is nightmare. If dog is not pursuing them, snake is biting them. If, or somebody will beat them to, the day, to, to, to come to life, they wake up and they will be sweating. What do you need? The glory of God. How about glaring retardation? You are just doing everything. Instead of you moving forward, yours is moving backward. One leg forward, three leg backward. Just moving in a circle. 
People will say, you dress up, you are going to work every day. But you are just working for work. At the end of the day, December, the only thing you will hope for is IRS. When you will file your tax. It's only, maybe it's 2000 they give you. you. Say, okay, oh. That's moving the circle. So if all these things are happening in one slide, what I'm using this is that we should not look too far to see the effect of the glory of God in our life. Because if I'm using Bible passages now, we say, oh, no, let's use our common example. That's why you need to be praying for the glory of God. So tonight, I want us to be on our feet. Let's just ask God. We have only three minutes to pray. Pray in any area of your life that you think the glory of God has departed. Say, Father, envelope me with your glory. This, tonight, I just ask for your glory. Daddy, I ask for your glory. Envelope me completely, Daddy. Oh, remove every mark of the devil. All the aura that is not from you, let it be washed away by your blood. Daddy, I want your glory to be upon me. That I will not be lonely, I will not be retired. That the barrenness will be far from me. I will, Lord, help me. I will not be barren. Daddy, I will not be a failure. Daddy, please let your glory overshadow me. I ask for your glory, Daddy. I ask for your power. Daddy, that I will become terror to the devil. That no man will molest me. Daddy, you say, touch not my anointing or do my prophet no harm. Let no man born of a woman be able to do me harm. None, none, no woman, no man that is born of a woman will be able to do me any harm. Daddy, let your glory be upon me. Your glory be upon my children. Let it be upon my wife, upon my family. We ask for your glory. Daddy, we ask for your glory. Almighty God, we ask for your glory. Jesus, let your glory be upon me. Daddy, I pray tonight your glory will not depart from me. I will not lose your glory, Baba. Oh, you will not leave me alone. You will not abandon me. Daddy, the glory that you've already given unto me, you will not withdraw it, oh Lord. Daddy, you will not put me to shame. Oh, I will not be disgraced. I will not be dishonored. Daddy, let your glory cover my shame, cover my nakedness. I will not be exposed. I will not be ridiculed. In the mighty name of Jesus, don't let your glory depart from me in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive your glory, Daddy. Oh, I thank you for your glory upon my life, upon the life of my children, Oh, upon the life of my wife, thank you for your glory upon our home. Daddy, we thank you. We bless your name. For in Jesus Christ's name we are prayed. For in Jesus Christ's name we are prayed. Well, let's give our offering and then we'll be going. Do we have any questions? I'm sorry. I didn't even ask for questions. Questions? Questions, please. I know we want to go home, but what? Do we have any questions? Are we entertaining before we go? Okay, if we don't have any questions, let's give our offering. Please, those of us online, kindly give your offering. This is not the time to horn, I mean, off your phone or your computer. Let's give our offering. We can give online. You text to 45888 and follow the instruction. May God reward you in Jesus' name. Come in this place. Let the glory of the Lord come. Let the glory of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the glory of the Lord Come down, let your power, let the power of the Lord come. Oh, in this place, let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Everlasting Father, we brought this token tonight. Please accept us and accept our offering. As we request this hour, Daddy, let your power come down. Anoint us to the detriment of the devil. 
Lord, please envelope us with your glory. That it cover our shame tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus Christ's name we are praying. Amen. Let us share the grace if there's no question. If we have question, I will entertain it. But if there's no question, let us share the grace. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are blessed in Jesus' name.